All right. Hi, guys. Um, this is Britt. If one thing my daughter has learned to do during this remote learning process is she has literally learned how to make my coffee with the Keurig. It's an amazing thing. And she's seven. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but she has learned and she brings it to me and it's so sweet and I'm very excited. Um, anyways, so that's a cute little tidbit. I am here to talk to you guys about the digital jigsaw and I'm going to sip my coffee while I do it because this is the situation we're in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am thinking this is mainly going to be for secondary students, maybe fifth or sixth. Okay. Um, and I'm going to share this with you and you guys can totally insert your own content like normal. Um, just make a copy and put your links in um, and change out your images and some text. Okay. So here is my thought process. Jigsaw is hugely successful in the classroom. And so I was thinking of a way to do it remotely because if we can have it be super successful in the classroom um, and if we can have it be super successful remotely, um, our kids will be learning. Now, this is a task I would say would take them a full week. Um, they wouldn't actually submit presentations until maybe a Friday or a Monday. I would even give them a weekend to do it um, if it were my assignment with my ninth grade freshman. So I pulled a ninth grade freshman embedded assessment from Springboard that I used to teach, and it was the um, historical investigation and uh, historical excavation, and I can't remember what else it is. Oh, and presentation, um, embedded assessment. So what I did is I have the historical context it's for so it's something they should be doing before they read To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, you might be already in the middle of To Kill a Mockingbird and you've already done this. Totally get it. But can you stop and do something um, right before Tom Robinson's court case, Digital Jigsaw, um, about all the different court cases that were happening during that time that relate? Absolutely. Okay. Think about your content area as I'm going through this. Think about your students' maturity levels. Okay. Um, but we'll do the best we can, and um, I think this one's going to be the hardest one that I've created so far, um, but it might have the biggest bang for the buck, so we'll see. Okay, and I also have notes at the bottom for you guys if you don't want to rewatch this video because I totally understand. Okay, the most important thing is that you have slides for each class period that you are teaching and that you have eight groups, okay? So if you have to have five students in a group, Fine. We all know that the ideal number is four. Three is better. Um, five is the worst, but if it has to happen, it has to happen. You know, class sizes are not perfect things. Um, and then honestly, the biggest thing is you need to have the student at the top be your rabbit if you've ever taken a class for me or the one that you know is gonna like get it done um, because they're gonna be the one that creates the google doc to share with their group and they're gonna be the one that creates the google slide to share with their group okay so you need your on it kid to be the top student name okay and then just go ahead and click in here and fill out their name so that way they know which group they are in this digital jigsaw um, to add um, slides, obviously just control copy. So control C and then control V will paste it. And then you could change this out and then you could do like your third hour or whatever you've got going. Okay, for your schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and then um, they should be able to find them. If you need to make them different colors, you can use the same directions because I know kids aren't following directions online, just like they don't follow directions in class. It's a shocker. Um, be like, third hour, you're the orange slide. Okay, um, joke around with them a little bit, give them a break. This is new to them too, and we're all just trying to survive. So here's their task, okay, and here are the standards aligned to the task. Your assignment is to work collaboratively to investigate the historical, cultural, social, and geographical context of To Kill a Mockingbird. You'll make a presentation of your findings, okay? audio, visual support using Google Sides, um, and then we'll post your final product to Wakelet. And so we're gonna talk about Wakelet at the end. Um, and it might be a good topic to talk about um, when I live stream later this week. I'm gonna try to do a live stream on Thursday. Okay, this next slide then is they know from this slide, I'm group two. Cool. So I'm gonna find group two which is right here, and it says click on your assigned number, okay, 
and use the Weva highlighter extension, okay, to highlight the article. And then when you're finished, save it to your Google Keep. These two things may be totally new to your students, but honestly, really great tools, okay? The Weva highlighter extension, um, if you don't know about that extension, I have a tutorial on it on my YouTube channel, which is just Brittany Bingold, okay? So you can go look that up too. Um, and the Google Keep, every student has a Google Keep if they have a Google account. They just don't know they have it. So at the end, I'll show you where that is as well. But basically they know, oh, if I'm group two, I'm reading this article on Emmett Till, okay? I try to keep them relatively short, you guys because um, that's it then these are just like questions okay each article is relatively short it's relatively the same length so there's no like animosity or something okay now the weba highlighter extensions up here once you click it okay not now i don't want to upgrade to premium nobody does okay um you would um create basically a folder a new subfolder um so i would say this is, if I'm a student, this is my Emmett Till annotations. Create. And then what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to be in there um, and so you would have that folder. So when they annotate, it kind of goes into that folder. Okay. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and start annotating with it. So maybe they feel like um, this is a really important point. It's going to come up and show up with some annotation tools for them. Okay, so they're going to click that. Once they highlight something, they can also take a note. So they can say, this is important because, or here's why I highlighted it or whatever. So that's really cool for their, their annotations. Okay, so I'm going to say, wow, that is a lot of people. Okay, so, and then when they hover over it, they can see their note. Okay, that's the Weva annotation link. Okay, then what they would want to do is they can then save it to their Google Keep. Okay, so the Google Keep is also an extension. They would click this, right? They would say, these are my Emmett Till article annotations um, for the Digsaw assignment. Okay. And obviously you might want to walk them through this lesson too, like I'm doing, so they can see what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, and then it's already been saved in their Keep. So where's Google Keep? It's in their waffle. Okay, they just don't use it a lot. Okay, if they scroll down enough, they'll find it. It's right here. It's a little um, idea area. And if they click that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna show up right here. And this is like a Pinterest for articles. So it would be super great for research projects. Okay. Um, anytime you want them to online annotate. Now, Weva only annotates PDFs and online articles. It's not going to let you annotate in Google Docs or Google Slides, okay? So it's just for um, online articles. Um, but there it is, okay? Um, and when they click it, they'll see their annotations are still there, and that's fabulous, okay? So they don't have to save it or download it if they don't want to. Okay, so that's a quick tutorial on both of those things. Um, and we can chat about that later in my office hours if you've got questions about those two items, um, because I think a lot of students are trying to figure out where to store all of this digitally. They've got their Google Classroom folders, um, but Google Keep is nice. Um, and it kind of is a, like I said, a Pinterest of their, of their research. All right, they've annotated their article. Now what they're going to do is they are going to go and the first name listed in your group from slide two. So remember that first name needs to be your key kid who's gonna do this, okay? Shares a Google Doc with the members of their group then based on the order of your names from slide two. So if I am first, because I always get my stuff done, and then Julia is next, and then Wendy, and then Vicky, sorry, Vicky, I didn't mean to put you in the bottom, okay? Then I would know, okay, Vicki, I'm the fourth person in my group, so I'm the fourth group member, so these are the questions I need to answer in the shared Google Doc about my assigned article. Let me say it again. I'm going to look at slide two. I'm going to figure out who I am in which order. If I'm Wendy, that means I'm the third person. That means I'm the third group member. These are the questions that I am going to answer based on my 
assigned article that I just annotated in my shared Google Doc. Okay. Again, if there's more than four in a group, if there's only three, they just answer the three questions. It's not a big deal. Fourth group member question just won't be on their Google Doc. If there's five, then I would either go with the second group member or the third group member because they have harder questions. Okay. Also, this is where you differentiate. Okay. The fourth group member has the easiest questions. So for a student who struggles, have them do um, the fourth group member's role. Okay. Now you're differentiating for um, your students in a way that they're not going to know because you're already just typing their names in a list. Okay. Um, but the second and the group member, first group member have the most work because they're going to have to go back to that article and pull examples from their annotations and um, cite them. Okay, so those are the way you can differentiate for your for your students. Okay, then what they're going to do is they're going to go into the first group member from the, the top group. Okay, again, same person is going to make the Google slide presentation for both groups now. Okay, so this is where it gets a little like funky and you need to explain it to your students. This first group member, Brett, me, I am not only making the Google, I'm not only making the Google Doc for my one group, or whatever group I'm in, group two, but now on this slide, I am making the Google slide presentation for both my group and group six, because we are now going to collaboratively take our answers that we have separately in Google Docs, combine them together into an awesome expert presentation on that topic. Remember, these two groups now are going to become experts on Emmett Till, the murder of Emmett Till, and they're gonna then share it with the rest of their class, okay? Then we've got the task directions. Feel free to modify these forever fits your students and the level of your students, okay? They want to have a cohesive presentation, okay? Um, in the first group member's job, they have to do a, like a 30 second recap of the article um, for their students. I think what would be something that would be fun is if they just used voice memo on their phone and they did their 30 second recap um, and then they uploaded it into a Google slide. And then the other group member, because remember there's two groups now that are trying to make a Google slide. They do a 30 second recap and then they put it on the same slide and it's like versus like which 30 second recap of the article was better. Um, just to try to add some interest into the um, slides. So if, when the other groups watch it to learn about their topic, it's of interest, okay? So again, you're highly encouraged to find images, short videos, audio that enhances your questions that you answered, okay? Remember, you're teaching the other groups this assigned topic, you're the experts on the article, try to make it engaging, okay? In class, if I did this in my actual class, this would be called a slideshow challenge, okay? So I wouldn't call it a digital jigsaw that freak them out. I just called it a slideshow challenge. And they did this exact same thing, okay? When your Google slide is finished, upload your presentation to Wakelet, okay? I'm using the link at the bottom. So you're gonna have to insert a link for each class period. That could get messy, so you might wanna have a slide for each class period and be like, first hour um, presentations, here's your link to Wakelet. Second hour presentations on a different slide, here's your link to Wakelet. Um, and then, this is gonna be crazy, are you ready? This is like, Screencastify Inception. This is me telling students how to upload their presentation to a Wakelet that you've created. So it's Screencastify Inception um, at the moment, but that's there for you too, so you don't have to make one. Okay. I also made a Wakelet. If you want to play around with it first, you guys are all collaborators on it. Wakelet is the new Padlet. Okay. Um, and it is, um, it is actually prettier and it's um, easier to use, I think. Um, so here's my example, Wakelet for a jigsaw. Okay, you can put whatever um, as, the, as a creator, okay, not a collaborator. I'm adding you guys as collaborators. Um, you can put whatever image here, whatever image in the back. You can select from their images. You don't have to download from Google, which is nice. They have like a pretty nice selection of real images. Okay, and then you can put your directions here. Okay, um, and so what your students are gonna see is all they're gonna see is these green buttons, okay? 
And when they open that green button, they're going to paste the URL that they shared. So once they have their Google slideshow um, presentation on the murder of Emmett Till, and it's all done, and all the group members collaborated, and it looks like it's a pretty good expert overview of what they've learned from that article, they'll take that shared link, right, to view. They'll plug it in here, okay? So let's just go ahead and do that. Can view, copy link, paste, okay? And then every single one of theirs is gonna say this. And I, I've already said this to them in my tutorial, but I'm gonna say it to you guys as well. This is an editable box. So what you're gonna want your students to do is click the edit button. And just like I did above, they're gonna write, okay, um, we are the murder of Emmett Till. And we are groups two and six, I think. That's what I just left up there. Doesn't really matter. Ah, two and six. Okay, so that's there. That's good for them to know when they're looking at their peers, like, oh, I need to still read the Emmett Till article. I still need to look at the presentation of that. I still need to look at that. But it's also good for you because then you know which one's which. And then they can even um, edit this as well. Okay. Um, and they can put things like their team members' names or a quick description, um, and then they hit save. Okay, so they could say, um, here, are my, here are our names, you know, group two, you know, it was Julia, it was Fred, it was Wendy, it was Vicky. I don't know why Vicky's always at the end. <laughs> okay, sorry, Vicky. And, and they can put like, okay, group six, okay, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, um, and they can add like an image of themselves or whatever, but I would just leave it blank and they hit save. Okay, so really as the teacher, you should have four of these to grade. That's it. And what I would do or what I have done before is I go through and look through each presentation. And as the teacher, I just take notes on what would be good questions to ask about that presentation. And then all you need to do is tell the students, hey, make sure now over the next week to review all of these article, um, oh, sorry, all of the expert presentations from your peers on the Wakelet. And at the end of the week, we're gonna do a quick Google form um, assessment on your learning of these topics before we start the novel, okay? Um, and you could even use GoFormative, you could use Socrative, you could use Google Forms, um, and that kind of holds them accountable too for um, looking at the other uh, slideshow presentations, okay? Um, and then you can also, once that Google Form goes up, you can, as the, um, creator you can close the wakelet so that they can't see it anymore you can lock it so that they can't go back and cheat okay um they'll have the answers to theirs but they won't have the answers to the others um, and hopefully they know theirs well enough where they don't have to look at it um, but that's wakelet it's really nice um and you can change the view too um it doesn't have to be a stream okay um, it can be like a Padlet where it's like all over the place and so definitely play with that that might be a great way to just lay out some um lessons and activities too if like you're trying to find something different than a choice board um, over the next coming weeks so okay that's the digital digital jigsaw and i talked really fast with my coffee because i wanted it to be short please 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 if you have questions i am available okay i will webex with you individually if you need me to um, if you go to the employee hub um, we have our WebEx private rooms linked um, under remote learning tips and tricks. So you can just click that link and then we'll, you know, just email me and we'll like schedule up a time and I can send you an invite. Um, if you want to get with me while I live stream, which I'm going to try to do, we'll see, which <laughs> should be fun, um, to the YouTube channel. Um, that's a great place to ask me these questions as well. Um, but remember, the effect size is 1.20 when you do a jigsaw. So it's huge for kids. Um, and you don't have to do it this way, but I just thought I would share away. Um, this is something, this is actually something I used to use in my own classroom. So I just modified it slightly um, to make it a little bit more user friendly for remote learning. Okay. Hang in there, guys. Stay home, stay safe. And um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all. The hard work you're doing for your students okay as a parent i appreciate it um, and as 
um, a teacher. I appreciate it. Okay. Have a wonderful day.